Shabbat Shalom, Ms. Picazas Mori Medad Yahoo. I want to welcome you to another live stream of my living branch here on Rumble. We're glad to have you. We're excited about the lesson for today. And as the Father continues to navigate our way, we are thankful, ever so thankful for his guidance. So as we always try to start the broadcast a little early, just in case we run into any glitches and hopefully we, you can hear me loud and clear out there in rumble land. Praise y'all for your presence. I tell you, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world. And as we're waiting for those to come in, I just want to just exalt you to remember that what's the world is a stage and what's being presented to us is always a distraction as to what is happening. Thank you, Aki, for that. I appreciate it. And if you have not been on the livingbranch.app, I encourage you to, you know, become a part and check it out. Put over there some, some interesting information that is not, you know, all we see in over in um, Israel is the war. But there are other things that's going on that's not being told. And it's all a part of an agenda. So rest assured, we try our best to stay on top of things and let you know what's happening. And of course, you know, we have the financial system is going through a major change. They are struggling to keep this debt-based system alive. So what's going to happen? Well, there's going to be a transference of wealth. And you need to start asking some questions. Well, what's it going to transfer to? What's going to happen to the debt-based system? Those are topics that Definitely, you need to think about research because it, they get ready to pull the old switcheroo. But guess what? When Whenever a magician <laughs> pulls a switcheroo, before he does it, he creates a distraction so that you're not looking at what he's about to do. So you can guarantee what they're about to do they're creating all these distractions and you're looking at the distraction and then before you know it, they don't pull the rug out and you're wondering where the rug went. This is how this system works. So over here, we're focused on righteousness. We're focused on the father's agenda, his journey, where he's taking us. And as we speak, we started working on some new videos for the Yahuwah.Army site just to update and bring more clarity for what we believe and why we call the Father Yahuwah. There, there is scholarship on it, but of course, like everything else, it's suppressed and most people are left up to their feelings and their emotions and the research that they allow you to access. But, you know, they always said, if you want to conceal something, hide it in a book. Because people want shortcuts. They don't want to research. They just want to play a video where so-and-so said such and such see it. But it's time for us to dig out the shovels and start to uncover and, 
and reveal some things. All righty, Ms. Picasso, we're going to get ready. We're at the top of the hour, 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We say Toda Rabah for all of those that joined us here. Shabbat Shalom to you. We're going to get ready and pray, and then we're going to get into this lesson of learning. Baruch Hashem Yahuwah Elohinu Malak HaAlam. Father, we thank you for being king of the universe, and we praise you forever. We give you all esteem, honor, and majesty. We ask you, Father, to continue to guide our footsteps. Guide us in the arena of righteousness. Help us to uncover the righteous things the things that were hidden from us, how we should live and how we should operate in this sinful generation and in this world that's not striving to be set apart, but they have an agenda. I pray that you strengthen those, Father, that are seeking you with a pure heart. And I pray that you wake up those, Father, that are asleep. Shake them, Father, so that they know that you are still in control and everything is still going according to your plan. We say, Toda Rabah, for your goodness, for your loving kindness, for your loving commitment. Continue to shield those that are yours and seal us into the day of redemption. We give you praise, honor, and esteem in the name of Mashiach, Yahusha. Hallel to Yahuwah. Amen. All right, Ms. Bukai, let's see. Of course, I always encourage you to make sure that your words and actions come from the tree of life and not from the mixture, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So easy to mix things. But we, we want the pure tree of life. It's nothing like having it pure. Now, this is where we're at. We are here on the man's journey. Don't worry, ladies. The woman's journey will start soon. And I think, um, uh, not unless the father says otherwise, this is going to be our last one on the man's path. And then we're going over to the woman's path. But all of the paths starts where? The Father's house. This is where the journey starts. So seeing the chain of authority and what happens when a man and a woman leave, leave their father's house is key to understanding how function and purpose work for a man and a woman. So we are showing some more here. This is key. Now, I want to remind you of this. Proverbs 13, 24. He who spares his rod hates his son, but he who loves him seeks him with discipline. And also Proverbs 3, verse 11. My son. Do not despise the discipline of Yahuwah and do not loathe his reproof. For whom Yahuwah loves, he reproves. As a father, this as a father, the son whom he delights in. So this is going to be an interesting journey for us. Okay. The place of growth and correction is your father father's house but there is another forgotten area that we see in scripture that is being a servant the role is depicted as negative in our today's world but it served a vital role in ancient times now I want you to look at this and we're going to come back to this because I got a question for you 
Genesis 24, verse 2. And Abraham said to the oldest servant of his house, who ruled over all that he had, please put your hand under my thigh so that I make you swear by Yahuwah. Oh, they, uh, they swore by Yahuwah by the, in those days. The Elohim of the heavens and the Elohim of the earth, that you do not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell, but to go to my land, to my relatives, and take a wife for my son, Yitzhak. Okay. Interesting. I want you to hold that while we go over. So the first part, my first mission is to show that a servant is what? Not a bad thing to be. Look at what Abraham's servant. He ruled over all of Abraham's, all that he had. He was ruler over it. He was the oldest servant in his house. Trusted. Hmm. Now, I want you to, we're going to kind of sidetrack here for a second because I, I want you to see a picture that the Mashiach creates of being a servant. Matthew 20, verse 20. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee said, uh, came to him with her sons, bowing down and making a request of him. And he said to her, what do you wish? She said to him, command that these two sons of mine might sit one on your right hand, the other on your left hand in your reign. But Yahusha answering said, you do not know what you ask. Are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink and to be immersed with the immersion that I am immersed with? They said to him, we are able. And he said to them, you shall indeed drink my cup and you shall be immersed with the immersion that I am immersed with. But to sit on my right hand or on my left hand is not mine to give. But it is for those for whom it has been preserved, prepared by my father. And when the ten heard it, they were displeased at the two brothers. But Yahusha called them near and said, you know that the rulers of the nations are masters over them. And those who are great exercise authority over them, but it shall not be so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you, let him be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you, let him be your servant, even as the son of Adam did not come to be served, but to serve and to give him his life as a ransom for many. Now, I've seen many who want to uh, be in the limelight. They, they, you know, they do things so that they can be seen. But this is not what Mashiach is advocating. We're not trying to be seen. We have a purpose. And, and the purpose is to follow him. He didn't come to be served, but he came to serve. And he wasn't trying to get move beyond his authority. It wasn't within his authority to give the left and right hand to sit on those sides 
to whomever that was in the father's hands. So he stayed within his authority and he had the mindset to serve. As you will see, I encourage you to go back and look at the mindset that uh, Eleazar, Abraham's servant, the mindset that he had in serving. He wasn't, you know, all up in arms about going to get a wife for Yitzhak or Isaac. He did it with purpose. He did it looking forward to the journey and praying that the father would guide him so that he could find what Abraham desired for his son. All in being a servant. Now, I got a question for you. This is something to think about. Why wasn't Yitzhak or Isaac over Abraham's house instead of his oldest servant? That's something to think about. Why wasn't he? If, if you look in Genesis 25, verse 20, and Yitzhak was 40 years old when he took Rivka as wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Armenian of Pandan Aram, the sister of Laban, the Armenian. So why didn't Yitzhak, he was old enough, why didn't he rule over it? So he was, what was he doing? What was Yitzhak doing all that time in his father's house? Well, see, you, you've got to see the picture. A son has to learn and so that he can be over his own house. At the appointed time, he he learned how to be a sacrifice. Think about when when Abraham was tested by the father to see if he loved his son more than he loved him, love Yahuwah. He was tested, and he was willing. To obey whatever Yahuwah said. Sacrifice his son. He had the knife raised. And at the last second. A voice came. From Shamaim of heaven saying. Abraham do not touch. Don't touch him. So. If you think. Was that a test. That was a test. For both of them. More specifically, Abraham. But it was also a test for Yitzhak or Isaac because he had to be willing. He wasn't no little boy. He had to be willing to be sacrificed. So there are a lot of learning in these stories that we can absorb as men that will teach us great lessons if we are willing to go through the process of learning the lesson. Remember, I always used to tell you, ask the father, what are you trying to show me? What are you trying to teach me? Because when you become, when nobody can't show you anything, can't teach you anything, then you, you're on a dangerous path. Because until your last breath, you're always going to be learning. You're always going to be seeing new dimensions of the Father. And you have to be willing and to accept it and walk out the process. See, and that's what happened to a lot of men. Walking out the process, they get impatient. They want it right now and in a hurry. So they miss 
the greatest teachings, the greatest lessons that would ever that would ever come across their life because of impatience. So we got to slow our roll. We got to slow it down. And see what's going on. But that's a question I want you to think about. Where was he? Okay, now, something to think on. Sonship and servanthood. Now, I'm going to bring out, at, at the end, I'm going to show you some other stuff. But I'm just going some other places here. In Isaiah 49, verse 1. Listen to me, O coastlands, and hear you peoples from afar. Yahuwah has called me from the womb. From my mother's belly, he has caused my name to be remembered. And he made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me and made me a polished shaft. In his quiver, he hid me. And he said to me, you are my servant. O Israel, in whom I am adorned. And I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for emptiness and in vain. But my right ruling is with Yahuwah and my work with my Elohim. And now said Yahuwah, who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Yaakov back to him, though Israel is not gathered to him, yet I am esteemed in the eyes of of Yahuwah, and my Elohim has been my strength. And he said, shall it be a small matter for you to be my servant to raise up the tribes of Yaakov and to bring back the preserved ones of Israel? And I shall give you as a light to the nations to be my deliverance to the ends of the earth. It almost sounds like what we read about Mashiach's mission, that's why I put it here. He said he didn't come to be served, but he came to serve. See, there's a mindset adjustment. And for a long time, they've been trying to program our minds. We, we've got we've to allow the word of Elohim to come back and take control. Now, I thought that this, when it comes to sonship and servanthood or hired servant, shows something because there, there are a couple of lessons that are going on here. and We're just going to touch the surface. The prodigal son is a great, Great, I'll say it again, great version or story or illustration from Mashiach that that just tells us volumes, okay? So I, I want you to, I'm going to pause at certain points and do some interjection. Okay, let's go to Luke, the 15th chapter, 11th verse. And he said, a certain man had two sons. The older of them said to his father, the, excuse me, younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods falling to me. And he divided his livelihood between them. And not many days after the younger son having gathered all together, went away to a distant country. He was no longer in the presence of the father. He wanted to be on his own, do his own thing, have it your way. 
and there wasted his goods with loose living. He wasn't living set apart. And when he had spent all, there rose a severe famine of food, a scarcity of food throughout that land. And he began to be in need. Okay, now notice what he was feeding himself, loose living, wasting. And then all of a sudden a famine came or scarcity of food. And he went and joined himself to one of the citizens of that country. And he sent him to his field to feed pigs. And he was longing to fill his stomach with the pots which the pigs were eating. And no one gave to him. He had reduced himself. You know, it almost illustrates the uncleanness that, that was in him. You know, he had reduced himself. He had it all. But his choices brought him to this point. Because all of us are going to have choices. Verse 17. But having come to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare? And I am perishing with hunger. Having risen, I shall go to my father's and say to him, Father, I have sinned against the heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of my of your hired servants. And having risen, he went to his father. And while he was still a long way off, his father saw him. It was moved with compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Okay, now let's see if he does what he said he would do. Because he had to, some, some have to learn a lesson the hard way. They have to go through the school of hard knocks. They have to be brought to nothing before they realize their choices got them where they are, that they need to repent and return to what is righteous. He returned to his father's house. He returned, he, he was supposed to be going back to return to his father's ways. Whereas he desired to do his ways, which was to waste loose living. So you have to make a decision. You have to, sometimes you, people have to see it for themselves. They keep doing the same thing hoping to get a different result. Well, guess what? You're not going to get a result, different result. You're going to get the same thing you've always been getting. You've got to change your mentality. You've got to change your ways if you want a different outcome. So now let's look here. Let's see in verse 21 if he did what he said he would do. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against the heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. He, he did exactly what he said he would do. Losing everything, being brought down to a low level. Brought humility, 
opened his eyes. He was abiding in death. And you'll, you'll see this why the father is saying what he said at the end. He was abiding in death. For some men, because you're hard-headed, you're going to have to go through and go to that point where it snatches you out of death to get you where you need to go. You, all, you almost got to go to the brink of death. Had nothing. He had to get folks to help him. And then the, the person that helped him sent him out to feed the pigs. And he was so hungry. He was looking at what the pigs were eating. Saying, if only I could have some of what they got. It brought him to a point of understanding you're gonna hit your head enough that sooner or later you're gonna realize you know some of the wisdom and counseling that you receive you're gonna start to listen to now look what the father does but the father said to his servants bring out the best robe and put it on him put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet, and bring the fattened calf here and slaughter it. And let us eat and rejoice, because this son of mine was dead. Why was he dead? When you operate in disobedience, sin, what does sin bring forth? Death. And what did he say? Is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to rejoice. And his older son was in the field. He was doing what he's supposed to do. We're going to talk about that at the end, too. And when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. And having called one of the servants, he asked what this meant. He said to him, your brother has come. And your father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he received him back in health. He was wroth and would not go in. Okay, now this is a test for the older son. Because he doesn't have a complete picture. He's just looking at what the younger son did and doing a comparison to what he's done. But he's not seeing what he's doing right now. How he's upset. And then isolating himself from the celebration. Because he's not looking through the eyes of the father. So even if you're in good standing and you're doing what you're supposed to do, you still got to be careful. Because you might misinterpret something and see it through your point of view instead of the father's point of view. So his father came out and pleaded with him and saying and answering, he said to his father, see, these many years I have been serving you. I have never transgressed. Now look at his record now. A command of yours, but to me you have never given a young goat so I can rejoice with my friends but when the son of your when this son of yours came he has devoured your livelihood with whores you slaughtered the fattened calf for him then he said to him son you are always with me 
and all that I have is yours. And we had to rejoice and be glad for your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and it is found. So you see the father's perspective. Has a very different mindset than the son. The son's looking at only his action. And what could be done for him. I'm talking about the older son. But the father is geared towards life and being found. He could have stayed lost. He could have stayed dead. But this whole experience has produced life in him and has caused him to find himself. He found humility and I guarantee you he'll be a better son from there. But the son that didn't experience that, his point of view is he he thought he was entitled. He wasn't looking at the greater picture. He was only looking at why hasn't the father done for me so I can be with my friends. But his brother wasn't with his friends. His brother was out there sinning. And he even said that he spent all, he, he was like, he was out there devouring your livelihood with whores. So both sons had to learn lessons. And they had to learn lessons from their father. One had to go outside the house, come back to the house. One was in the house, but still had to learn more to see a bigger picture, to see what's more valuable. And men, you've got to learn where to place value. Some of us are placing value where there is no value. Investing in the word of Elohim. Becoming the best son possible. Becoming the best servant possible. No matter what capacity you find yourself in, you want to be the best at that capacity. And that's when growth and promotion comes. But if you just half doing, half hearted. See, remember, he's the father knows your heart. See, the father could look at that other son's heart and hear his words. Look at verse 21. Father, I have sinned against heaven. Who do you think he was referring to? And before you, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Look at that humility. But he had to go through something to get there. The other son getting an attitude because sometimes we're in the house. We're doing stuff on a day to day basis, but. When in, when different information comes, the attitude sets in. If we don't want to operate with the attitude, we want to see how the father sees a bigger picture. Okay, now, this is where it's going to get interesting. Because no one would think of this in today's times because of how we've been programmed. But I want want you to hear this out. 
and it's for a purpose. Then I'm going to show you a chart and let you study it out some more. Look at Leviticus 25, verse 39. And when your brother who dwells by you becomes poor. Okay, now go back in scripture. There are some things that can cause you to be poor. Your decisions, who you, who you, how you operate according to the commands. So he gets to a place. Now, now keep, continue to listen. And sells himself to you. Now, who's initiating this? He becomes poor. He sells himself to you. Now, the father's telling you how he wants you to approach this. He says, do not make him serve as a slave. But what is he comparable to? But as a hired servant, as a seller with as, as a settler, he is with you and serves you until the year of your bell. So he's he's comparable to when he sells himself, he's comparable to a hired servant. There could be all kind of underlying causes why he got to where he is. And he's going back through a process of learning how to serve. So it could have, you know, it could have been many things. I can't pinpoint one thing. But if he didn't serve well in his father's house, get out here on his own, it's possible he could become poor. But this is designed to bring humility and bring him to a certain point. Because when he returns to his inheritance, he'll know how to treat it. He'll know how to be over it. Look at verse 41. Then he will leave you Then he shall leave you, he and his children, with him and shall return to his own clan, even return to the possession of his father. So if he became poor, this whole process will help renew him when he goes back to his possession of his father's. Because if he doesn't go back with the right mindset, in the right attitude and still in him, he's going to go through the process all over again. For they are my servants whom I brought out of the land of Mitraim. They are not sold as slaves. You do not rule over him with harshness, but you shall fear your Elohim. Okay, to rule over theirs. Rada, which is to um, to trade down. You're not to trade him down. You're not to crumble him apart. You're not to have dominion over him. This is a serving. He serves. Now notice here. And your male and female slaves whom you have from the nations that are around you, from them you buy male and female slaves. And also from the sons of the strangers sojourning among you, from them you buy, and from their clan who are with you, which you shall bring forth into your land. And they shall be your property. Talking about the slaves. Okay, but you're not treating a servant, hired servant, as a slave. You don't treat your brother as a slave. He's not your property. 
and you shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you to inherit them as a possession. They are your slaves for all times. But over your brothers, the children of Israel, you do not rule the harshness one over another. So you don't rule with harshness and he learns to serve you until the year of release. Oh, yes. Yes, Maury. Yes, Rome. He, he has to relearn that thing. But whatever the cause, if he doesn't learn it before the year of release, he's going to go back and repeat that whole process. It becomes a vicious cycle. And yes, it is better to go through certain things. Remember, who is not trying to change your situation? He's trying to change you. And this is what the service, the serving, like a higher servant should do. If you have the right attitude. So if, if the father has appointed, see, I, I don't know your circumstance. But if but if you're gonna serve, when I say serve, you know I don't, I don't know your situation. I don't know um, you, you. Today's time, you won't see anybody selling themselves, you know, because we're outside the land. We don't have an inheritance at this point to return to. But what I will tell you is, if if you have to um join yourself to someone to serve then i suggest that that you do it wholeheartedly or if the father has sent you to be of service to someone do it wholeheartedly learn the lesson i keep coming back to that Learn the lesson of why you're serving. Serve with humility. Work through that process. And you will see great value come to your life. You'll, you'll find that great people have sat under great people. That's how they learn. But if but if you're not willing, then you'll just keep on the same cycle that you're on. Now, I want you to keep note. He makes a difference that Israel, your brothers, are not slaves. You don't rule over with harshness. But you're doing all of this because of what the father commanded and you fear him. Now let's go to Exodus 21. Let's see what it says there. Because this is not, this, this language doesn't say um, that in the other verse in Leviticus, we saw that they sold themselves. Here, you're seeing you bought. And it gives a time period. And it doesn't say it's connected to your bell, the year of release. It gives a specific time period, and then you go free. Okay, so look at Exodus 21, verse 1. And it starts off. Let me just, just start it off like this. Right rulings. The average believer reads this. They don't see it as righteous way, as a righteous way. Are you guilty? These are the right rulings 
of the father. This is what he put out. These are his guidelines. These are the right rulings which you are to set before them. When you buy a Hebrew servant, he serves six years and the seventh he goes out free for naught. If he comes in by himself, he goes out by himself. If he comes in married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master has given him a wife and she has borne him sons or daughters and the wife and her children, the wife and her children are her masters and he does not go out and he does go out by himself. So if he comes, if, if he's a Hebrew servant and he's bought, comes into a house, he serves there. If the master gives him a wife and he, he has four or five children, when, he leave, when he's ready to leave out that seventh year, those children are the masters. Okay. Either you believe what the word says or you don't. I'm not here to argue with you. Yahuwah said those children belong to the masters because he, the master, gave him the wife. Now, if he goes in with the wife, him and his wife go out together in the seventh year. Okay, look at verse five. And if the servant truly says, I love my master, I love my wife, I love my children, let me not go out free, then his master shall bring him before Yahuwah, excuse me, before Elohim, and shall bring him to the door or to the doorpost, and his master shall pierce his ear with and on, and he shall serve him forever. Now, how did he get to this position? I don't know. But for whatever reason, he's a servant. He's a Hebrew servant. And these are the guidelines. Sometimes you have to go through the servitude to master, to, to understand what's going on, how to operate. Because think about this. If the master can afford to buy a servant, you go back, study the life of Abraham. Abraham had many servants. And he trained them. And how they operated, they operated according to how the household was set up. So you get to see how it's supposed to work from someone, hopefully, that is doing it correctly. Serving is not a bad thing. If we were still in the land, this would be great for a lot of men. Because they, they wouldn't have skill sets. Playing Nintendo and playing Xbox and all that stuff, that's not a skill set. They could do an EMP and bam, they could knock all that stuff stuff out. All the electronics gone, boom. Then what? So, no matter what path you're on, you got to understand. You have to learn 
from the path that you're on. Many aren't learning and they they own it's like a record on repeat. Okay, let's go back to Luke the 16th chapter. So you you learn. Okay, so let's look here. And he said unto his disciples, there was a certain rich man which had a steward. And the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. He called him and said unto him, how is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship. For thou, uh, for thou mayest not, thou mayest be no longer steward. Then the steward said within himself, what shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. I cannot dig. Didn't, didn't I say about skill set? I cannot dig and to beg, I'm ashamed. I'm resolved to do. To do, uh, excuse me, I'm resolved what to do. That when I am out, put out of the stewardship, they may receive me in their house, into their house. So he called every one of his Lord's debtors unto him and said unto the first, How much owest thou unto my Lord? And he said, and hundred measures of oil. And he said unto him, take thy bill and sit down quickly and write 50. Then said he to another, and how much owest thou? And he said, a hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, take thy bill, and write four scores. And the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. And I say unto you, make to yourself friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when you fail or ye fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitation. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore ye have been not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to you trust of true riches? If you or ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? Did, did you did you just read what it says? Did you did you read did did, uh, did y'all catch verse twelve? If you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to one and despise the other. You cannot serve Elohim, or for the context of this, God and mammon. So what are you what are you gonna serve? Told you it's lessons to be learned. Now look at this. I'm going to get to this chart here in a second. Matthew 24, 45. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord has made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant when his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming and shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink with drunken, the drunken, 
The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when they when he looketh not for him, and in the hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder and appoint his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So this is the chart, and I put down here, you can take a screenshot of this, this if you want to go back. Hebrew servant, hired servant, or this is like the hired servant. So you can go from your father's house. You can have your own house. You might be a Hebrew servant. You might be a, like a hired servant. Okay. But here, if you're in your own house and you don't oversee and do um, execute with wisdom, you can end up being a, a Hebrew servant or a hired servant. But if you're faithful here, okay, here at your bell, you return to your what? Your own house, your father's house. Here, if you do what you're supposed to do at the end of the seven years, there's so much value in you that you can get your own house. The, the whole goal is to go from your father's house to your own. But there's a lot of nuances in here. The, high, the Hebrew servant could go back here, go back here, the hired servant. So no matter where you might be on the spectrum, if you're faithful over little, he'll make you faithful over much. And that's what you got to strive to do, be faithful wise, humble. So, as we can see, the end result is Yahuwah's purpose. Remember, correction, acceptance here. If you're rejecting his correction, you're going to continue to go through that cycle. Don't let nobody fool you. They want to tell you it's the devil doing it. It ain't the devil doing it. It's you. It's your decisions, even the little things, the choices you make, who you putting first. I'll leave it at that. So unless the Yahuwah says otherwise, we're going to next week go over to the women. And we'll see what the scripture has to say. And we're going to walk that out. All righty, let's pray, Ms. Baca. If you have prayer requests, you can send them in to info at mylivingbranch.org. Father, I pray for your wisdom. We all need it. We're all at a place in this journey that we need to move forward. Move forward with new power, with new strength, with new vitality. I pray, Father, you open our eyes. Give us the wisdom we need at this point. Continue to stir the pot around. Our desire is to see you in peace. Help us to be faithful over what you have appointed for us at this hour. We thank you, Father, for all you do. No one can match your kindness and your love towards us. Hallelujah. We give you praise, honor, and esteem for that. In the name of Mashiach, Yahusha. Leo to Yahuwah, Amen. All righty, Ms. Picasso. Over the coming weeks and months, we're going to be adding some more material to Yahuwah.army to when people get the bookmarks to draw me in. So if you, we're still giving out the old bookmarkers and when those finish, we'll start, we'll go to this bookmarker. They'll be ready to go. So if you need some bookmarkers, hey, hit us up at bookmarkers.com club 
And make sure you keep check on the Yahuwah.army website. Pasak is going to be here soon. I mean, time is rolling. I mean, it seemed like it was just Monday. It seemed like we just finished the coat. Time is rolling. So if you need something to you know, help your children, you got it right here, the Hebrew Passover story for children. Just type it in Amazon, and it'll bring it right up. Ms. McCaw, I want to thank you for all your support. Please, if you haven't joined livingbranch.app, go over there, become a part. Design for fellowship. People go and post scriptures and encouraging things there. So come on over and be with us. And if you would like to help us in this journey, you can do so by um, donating online. Here's the address, PayPal, Cash App. You know, whatever you can do to help, we appreciate you. We want to thank you for joining. And remember, we righteous strong over here. That's what we emphasize. So I hope you're ready for next week. Um, it's going to, you know, it's, it's because of the agendas in the world, you know, Whenever we go to the lady side, is always more pushback. But we'll see. But we're going to give it just like we see it in the scripture. It's all about purpose. It's all about function. And we want people to operate according to scripture. So we don't want you operating, you know, if you were created to be something. We don't want you to be acting like something you're not. We want you to be create. We want you to act like you were created to be. All right, Miss McCaw, appreciate you. If you have any questions, make sure you email me info at mylivingbranch.org. And thank all the Maureen that tuned in. We appreciate you for joining. Appreciate all our Miss McCaw. We couldn't do this stuff without you. Your prayers, I appreciate that, you know, because I know we need more and more stuff to advocate for righteousness. All right, Ms. Bakai, this is Maureen Medea Yahoo saying unto you, Shabbat Shalom, and let's make this the best Shabbat ever. Shabbat Shalom, Ms. Bakai.